Okay. So, um, we're just, okay, we're just setting up, I guess. Brian, are you there? Are you, okay, can you not hear me? I mean, what is this uh, non-incommunicado am I feeling and seeing and smelling? And why are you putting lamps away? Sure. Shut up. Sh Shut the fuck up. Shut up. <laughs> you know, there's something grotesque about you in like the most delightful way I've ever seen in my entire life. And nobody could put their finger on what it is that you do. Although there certainly is a problem when you look at you in the eyes, there's a problem. Do you not agree with that? That you have problematic eyes? What is your particular problem? You seem to be very, very effective and very quick at pointing out other people's character defects, problems, whatnot, or shortcomings. But you seem to just skate through life with a green screen. I don't know how to take that and I don't even know what it is, but I'm just going to put it over to the side and say this to you. You look like you're trying to play some sort of instrument that's never been played before. And you, and I want to ask you about your mustache because I don't see it that close up, but you trim it every day or twice a day or what? I trim it when it needs to be trimmed. Now, is it true that you have never been in a movie without a green skin, uh, a green screen? Where would you be without a green screen? Where would you be without a computer? You couldn't act your way out of a wet paper bag without a green screen. What what funny character movie uh, 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 hero are you this week? <laughs> Do you even know who you are? <laughs> you know what a movie is? Do you know what a movie is? Dialogue. Your acting partner is a green screen. All I know is I was supposed to do an interview with you about an hour and a half ago, and I couldn't get a hold of you. So whether or not I'm working with the green screen or not, you know, um, hey, buddy, it's tennis. It's two people, two rackets. Hello. Let's wake up. Oh, I'm awake. I am awake. And I've been looking forward to speaking with you for quite some time because I think you're overrated to a lot of to a certain extent. You're no Pirates of the Caribbean. You're no uh, uh, courtroom boy. What's his name? Uh, one with the uh, bad wife who used to go uh, in the bed? Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. You're no Johnny Depp. You're no Pirates. I don't want to be Johnny Depp. Listen, I have a, plenty enough things on my plate. I have a wonderful marriage. I love myself. I do uh, yoga. I'm in touch with things. I, I'm fine. That's the problem. I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you, that's you're the, the problem. You're the Most guy who wears the same. You're the guy that wears the same shirt every day. I happen and, to like this shirt. I happen yeah. to enjoy this shirt. I like it. I like to swim in my clothing. This is a, this is the, this is Victor Simmons, dead's father's shirt. He was Listen. a very large man and I inherited his clothes. I want to be real with you because this is. Oh, maybe that's the green scheme, uh, the green screen, co the green screen company. Maybe that's the green screen company. <laughs> God. Is this going to end? Is this, a uh, seriously, seriously, honestly. I'm please. a superhero. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> you know what you're, you know, you know what you're like? You're like that five-year-old that, that just, just had some sugar and he can't stop running around and bouncing off the ceiling. You're out of your mind. You're a uh, quasi go go and you're quasi goo goo and you're back and forth and you're up and down and you're this and that. And I want to ask you real questions. I want to talk about what it was like when you when you worked at Burger King. Because you, you used Burger to <laughs> well, I was a champion Burger King. I worked the fry station. Uh, large fries, small fries, large onion ring, small onion ring, fish sandwich chicken sandwich oh yeah i was the king at rush hour nobody could top it nobody could top how quickly i i uh 
uh, prepared those fries and onion rings and chicken and fish sandwiches. So you were in charge <laughs> of preparing everything, the, the fries, the sandwiches, the... No, I mean, not the sandwiches. Not the sandwiches. I worked the fry station, okay? Not the sandwiches. Oh, Just the fry I, station. I, I didn't mean to offend you. Just the hot oil. Just the hot oil. Now we're talking about hot oil. Okay. <laughs> now this I, is, I want now to I feel, now, Well, I feel uncomfortable and I also apologize. And I also find you so interesting and so quasi goo I mean, you're putting your face up against the screen. You got your eyeglasses just, going on. I'm just Can trying we stay to on? see if you're a... I'm just trying to find out if you're a real person or just a bot. <laughs> Jesus. You also... No, I want to apologize. You're a very gifted actor. I want to apologize. It's just I'd like to see you have some dialogue with another actor or actress instead of just doing all your scenes behind a green screen. A green screen. Look, you screen. can't even say screen. green screen. Say screen. You can't even say the word and you try to insult me no. like this. How dare you come at me with such vigor? Are you frozen up? Are you frozen up? <laughs> no, it's working. Just because it's frozen doesn't mean it's not working. It's recording and it's downloading to our computers and then it'll soon go up against, uh, up into the show. Robert Downey Jr. Is that your real name or is that the Hollywood, the, the Hollywood name they gave you? Talk about being, <laughs> talk about being, talk about. <laughs> oh my God. Of all the celebrities, you probably wake up in the middle of the night going, why did I have to be me? <laughs> Better me than you. You know your movies are great if you if you if you're nine years old. <laughs> you, you want me to take you out for a happy meal for lunch? <laughs> no, you're a wonderful actor. You're a great talent. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, ask me whatever you want, Robert. Robert, you're frozen. You're frozen, Robert. You get, are you in the Frozen movie too? You play the snow more, the snowman. <laughs> are you frozen, Robert? You're frozen. Jesus. Help me, Wanda. Help, help me, Wanda. <laughs> You get, are you in the Frozen movie too? No more. The snowman. So we're waiting for Brian to come back in the room. It's to the best of my ability or knowledge that he probably doesn't have very good Wi-Fi, probably not very good at all. And um, yo, what happened? Um, I don't know. Your internet must suck. You is thinking it was your internet. Hey, I'm sorry. I was coming in too hot. No, I can use it. We got seven minutes. I, you got to get a better internet connection. You, 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 oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get right on that. <laughs> hey, get, get, on, get on the internet. Let's try again. So we're recording. I'm still in quasi-moto mode. And uh, we're waiting for Brian. Brian's come back in. Brian's come back in the room. We had some technical difficulties. 
and I feel like those are over now. I feel like they're behind us, or at least behind in a way. Um, like, you know, just some sort of meditative. Okay, you've got the phone going the wrong way, buddy. That's how I had it the first time. No, it's not how you had it the first time. The first time you had it like that. Don't try to tell me what you're doing or what you're part of like something. This? Like That's fine. You, you, there's no way we can get your big head in the in the whole shot, the whole any no matter which way you go. How's that? People think that you're an interesting person. Why are you interesting to people? Well, I think uh, when I interact with people from different cultures, different nationalities, different backgrounds, uh, perhaps different religions, different belief systems, I think it's important to convey uh, an atmosphere of interest in the differences that uh, uh, we have. To overlook some of the obstacles to being uh, friendly or uh, inquisitive about one another. So I think that helps a lot into interpersonal relationships, whether that be uh, spur of the moment interactions in public, close friends and associates, and of course, family and friends. Co-workers are important as well. You spend a lot of time. You you probably spend a lot of time on your your movies, your green screens, and you have to interact with crew. Okay, and- so the, the, the reason that we made a break, the internet break, so that now we're coming back and doing part two, is so that you would stop doing these uh, attacks, these, um, you know, just trying to tear me down, trying to make, you know, it's, it's a green screen, okay? Everyone uses a green screen, okay? Not everyone. Okay. Not, not Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson doesn't use, Brad Pitt doesn't use uh, 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 a green screen. Yeah, uh, no, I understand Harry Jack Bad- Nicholson doesn't, Bad- I understand Jack Nicholson doesn't use a green screen, okay? Talk about your mustache some more. Like, where does it come from? What does it do? What 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 is it? Oh, this is a this is a a standard. Uh, they call this mustache the uh, weekend flash. It's not the walrus. The walrus will traditionally cover the upper lip. Uh, this one is more neat and uh, and and trimmed. Uh, basically, I have to trim this mustache approximately three to four times a week just to keep its shape and uh i enjoy it i uh i think it gives me an extra bit i guess it's kind of like uh reinventing yourself uh, it's important to change with their times and i've never had a mustache in my whole life i figured well this is a good time to start a mustache at this age at this time okay. in my life I thought that a mustache this is, this is appropriate. <laughs> talk, this talk is to- what's weird about... Let me talk Let me talk for a sec. You know what's weird about you? A lot of things. But the, the, the first one I can think of is that you become this other person when you're your person. Like when you're talking off stage, you're one guy. But then when you're talking on stage, you're like three or four other guys. You believe that? You have a... You you have delved into your own imagination, and I think I think what's come out on the other side is maybe you know not the best best looking fish tank, you know. You believe that, do you? The transition. Talk about uh, let's talk about some real things. Talk 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 about serious things for a second. Your special just came out. Oh yes. You're in Tennessee right now, right? You're living in Tennessee. No, no, not Tennessee. Austin, Texas. Austin, Tell Texas. me about your life in Austin, Texas, and it, what is it? What is? How's it go? I'm renting a room from an Indian family. Uh, you can see my bunk in the background, and uh, it's wonderful. I'm working at the Joe Rogan uh, comedy uh, comedy mothership on Sixth Street, and that is going just smashing. And uh, I have a special out on YouTube. If you just type in uh, "cancel Holtzman." dot com it'll take you right to my youtube channel and the first thing you'll see will be the special and you can watch it uh i encourage everyone to take a peek and see what they can uh get out of themselves for a second you know and what does it do i mean what does it do like you look at it and you watch it and it's like is it a meditative state are you doing one-liners are you doing like you like just kind of like 
bookend work or like what is it what is it how does it beat what is it well what i do do? is i start off by dropping my pants and underwear and i I, uh defecate on the stage and then i take the defecation from the stage (laughs) and i smear it on the front row of all the audience members and then if i have to urinate i'll urinate on the uh faces of the people who have already been defecated on and then i go into some uh history and some uh (laughs) Knock knock jokes and whatnot. I try to get a rise out of the audience, and and uh, that's what I do on stage. Sounds like what everybody kind of got their money that? back. Hmm. I said it sounds like everybody got their money back. Oh, Look here, buddy. Hope. This is not my first rodeo, and even if it was, I would I would still wear these boots. Yeah. Tell me about tell me about tell me about early days doing stand up comedy, like going from regular life society into I'm now on stage. I do comedy. I'm like on stage doing comedy, that kind of thing. What, tell me tell me about that. Can you rephrase that question? When you started doing comedy, what was it like? It was wonderful. It was a, it was a breathtaking experience. It was a release. There's nothing more rewarding to get people to laugh, to free themselves up from their everyday uh, distractions and problems issues uh uh, it's just wonderful to bring out that natural laughter it's the best medicine there is and i recommend it wholeheartedly and it only costs the amount of money that you're paid to get into the club okay but then take me through the other part which is these are your friends these are the first guys you meet on the scene And how many of those guys are you still friends with? Oh, I'm friends with James Tripp, a very talented uh, uh, actor, uh, comedian. Uh, Peter Newman. Peter Newman is a a, a diamond in the rough. Uh, An artist, uh, Al Berman. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, Louis Mosier. Louis Mosier. uh, Ray Dawson. These These are members... That Ray Dawson. That's a name I haven't heard out of your mouth. Ray Dawson. Ray Dawson. Was the Ray Dawson? Was he guy from Family Feud or something? Who is he? Oh, he's an old uh, vaudeville act that we got together and we used to work together, and then we parted ways, and he did his own. Okay, that's okay. That's a lie. Why do you tell me things that aren't true? Just say things that are true because there's so many things to say that are true, and you don't need to make things up. It's like we have like how many minutes? Like another 20 minutes, 15 minutes, and you're like pissing it away with this, this, this bullshit. I don't know what, what, what you're talking about. What are you talking about? Huh? What are you talking about? We used to do a, uh, 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 a doll. See so the way I'm talking, but my lips are not moving. Are you? Come on. on and tell me what you're going to do next. You see that? That's a talent, buddy. There's no green screen behind me. <laughs> When's yeah, just keep movie? pushing. When's keep pushing. Movie? Snowman and the puppet. Whenever I want it to be. Whenever I want it to be. Thank you very much. Right. You know, you you know, you when you when you press the thumb down, you'll still have the nail on top. Okay, don't forget that. I won't. Don't forget about the nail on top. Okay, buddy. I certainly won't. What do you think about the state of films today? You want to want to have a conversation about filmmaking today, perhaps? Well. I just feel like filmmaking days, especially with AI and the sort of leadership that we have and the people that want to make videos and music videos and feature films and TV shows and all these different things. I think that the radical dis, dispowerment of having some sort of juxtaposition is cataclysmic. And if, if a computer can do it, then anything can do it. And if I can do it, then you can do it. And then, you know, tutti frutti, this and that, you know. What about game shows? What do you think about game shows? Well, I mean, uh, a little gamey for me. Some of the game shows are a little gamey, but um, there's a lot of good ones. Um, off the top of my head, I'd say probably like um, a Jeopardy's classic. You know, and they're just mixing around. What about Pat Sajak? It. Wasn't it wonderful that Pat- he finally retired and get rid of that Vanna White? She wasn't doing anything anyway. You know, most people that ask questions like that, that are Vanna directed White? towards Vanna White, have issues. Anyone that dwells on Vanna White too much, like today, 23, there's something wrong. There's a there's something wrong with you in, internally. 
She wasn't doing anything. Those letters turned by themselves. They lit up by themselves. She was she was it was a non starter. Talk about talk about working meter maids. You should be a meter maid. <laughs> what was that about? Come on, get into it. It's about keeping this the is streets the thing that people want to hear about. <laughs> Without a meter maid, people would camp out. <laughs> no one would be able to do anything or go into any retail stores. <laughs> there would be cars on sidewalks. It would be a mess. So are you doing God's work? <laughs> I'm doing the city's work. I'm doing the public's work. <laughs> so you're saying God doesn't live in the city? What's it like having that power? Because you got that back then, I guess this must have been the early 70s. You had that, <laughs> would you, was kind of more of a solenoid that you'd hold, right? A giant brick. How did it work? What did it do? Where did it come from? Uh, it was a... Uh... I had, to, I had to handwrite each citation. <laughs> I have blisters on my hands just where the pen, you know, oh, my God. Just every time it had to be go, it's just, Jesus. <laughs> X, yeah, Hebrew, uh, National, uh, Adam, Henry. <laughs> and no, what were your... What were your lunches like? I mean, they must have been massive... <laughs> because you're over six foot tall and angry. So you're probably eating, what, like four sandwiches a day or something? I, I, I my, my, my eating habits are none of your concern. Okay. You want to ask me some <laughs> legitimate questions about my career, about my life? I would say your, I would say your carbon footprint is everyone's concern, sir. I think your carbon footprint, and I imagine you're a guy that, Probably flatulates more than most, maybe <laughs> twice as much as most, like a lot. <laughs> Tell me more about Burger King. What was Burger King like again? Give me a sense of Burger King. Burger King was wonderful. That's when I I lost my virginity with an employee at Burger King. That was in the Burger King parking lot in my sister Terry's Mustang. Uh, 72 Mustang, you know, that funky Mustang when they lost their way and it looked really, it didn't look very nice at all. <laughs> and it was I don't nice. know what a good looking Mustang, I wouldn't know what a good looking <laughs> Mustang is, but I imagine you had fun. Did you wear a condom? Oh, no, I was a bad backer from the get go. I was an et expert at, at uh, uh, knowing when to uh, just this keep it real. Say it, say it the way. This is family friendly. You know, Iron Man was his family family friendly. Franchise. Oh, I know. And I'm, yeah, you got to be three uh, years old to go in the movie. Yeah, I was uh, good at uh, disengaging. How's that? I was an expert at disengaging. You, were, you just like the water buffalo you look like. <laughs> I see what you mean. That makes a lot of sense. Um, Moo! You're, you're, Moo! Oh my god. You look like a guy you look like a guy that likes TV dinners. Am I wrong? It's been a pressure talking to you, really. It really has been uncomfortable to somewhat disorientating. Well maybe if you didn't have the like the, the camera up like literally up your nose right now, it's like I can see every hair on your face. <laughs> How's this? You like this better? I'd rather you weren't even in the if you weren't in the frame would be maybe best. Oh well thanks for thanks for doing this. This is wonderful. This should uh this should increase my views on my comedy special by uh tenfold at least. Talk about what it is that you do when you're not doing what you do. Like I know right now you live with an Indian family in Austin. Can you talk yes. about that? Like what is it like being in, I guess, well, you're not Indian, but you're you're kind of like right there. What's that like? It's like living in a 7-Eleven. But they feed me and uh, they're very, very nice. And uh, I couldn't ask for uh, better hosts. And, uh, and sometimes uh, live with an Indian family. Gets the monkey off your back, you know? 
it gets the monkey off your back. Listen, are we doing <laughs> codes and like surreal like um, advertisements for like uh, voodoo churches or something? Like, like what does it mean? Where did it go? Where's it coming from? Why are you looking at me like that? You just you you are a madman. You know that you're a madman. You know that your legacy is being a madman. People think you're a genius, but do you think that you deserve it? And you do seem autistic. Are you autistic? Are you uh, subliminal? What do you do with your feet? Where do you What do you do with your Where do those come from? Why do we have hands? That's what I want to know. Why do we have hands? Did you ever think of that? Why do we have hands? I guess to grab things. I don't know, but it seems kind of weird, alien like. You know, ears, and noses, and eyes, and mouths, and teeth, and tongues, and tonsils, Achilles' heels, and ankles. Why? Did you? Why? <laughs> did Did you mount that camera to your face? Like, how are you able to get it so close? I mean, it's so close that you look like Eddie Griffin right now. <laughs> no, not Eddie Griffin. Eddie, uh, Eddie Griffin. No, not Eddie Griffin. Uh, <laughs> Mm. Elvis Another Costello. Eddie. I look like Elvis Costello. <laughs> Eric Griffin. You look like Eric Griffin. That's it. You got the same sort of like thick glasses. Tell me one more thing about your mustache that I wouldn't already. already tell me about your mustache. Tell me more about your mustache. Tell me something about your mustache well, that you didn't tell me already. It it, it cost about uh, I. I pay about eighteen hundred dollars a month in uh, black hair dye. Yeah, and uh, and uh, and they. Uh, who's your Who's your favorite sibling? Oh, I I enjoy them all. I, I'm very fond of my brother Jay and my brother Bruce and my sister. Terry Ann and Mary Ann and Bobby Ann. This is Gilgan's Island episode. <laughs> it's like where's you know where's where does it end and where does it stop? How do you, how do they look at you? Your other family members? What is the general consensus? Oh, they're they're very they're very fond of me as well. They're very happy with what I'm doing with my life, and I'm happy with what they're doing with their life. And everybody's happy with their lives and how they're living their lives today in their life. I know you're trying to be cute, no, and no, I appreciate no, it. No, 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 no but, but let's just let's just break it down for a sec. Like you're trying to be kind of wholesome and and um and um uh, just sort of sensitive or whatever. Like it doesn't get through me. Don't think it does. It doesn't get through me, and I it's not exiting the building, in my opinion. So, um, so you don't have to do like, the, I don't need to see your dimples, you know, I just, I want to just, I want to hear from you. I want to talk to you. I want to look at you, but I don't want it to last forever. You know, you know what this is? <laughs> what is this? Is that for a pee jug? This is a pee jug. That's correct. Ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. We have a winner. It's a male urinal. It's a male urinal. Don't wake up the family in the middle of the night when you have to go pee pee. Get a male urinal. It's convenient. It's close by. And it always holds quite a bit of urine for that particular night. So don't delay. Call today. Get the male urinal at maleurinal.com. It'll save time, money, and you won't upset the Indian family in the night. Wow. That's, that is a urine, that's a urine, that's a story for all urinals. And on that note, he has checked out. Are you there? I can't see you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Can you we hear me? We are racing. Okay. I wish I wish I couldn't hear you, to be honest with you. I I'm looking <laughs> at you and you're not there. I just see a Can you see me? Can you oh, see yes. me? You can't see me? Oh no, now it's No, I can't. I can't see you. I can't see you either. But you know what's so weird myself. about this this world we live? 
Yeah, but is it recording? Like, can it record both of us? Is it just, it, I feel like it's recording, but we can't see each other, which is kind of better for me because you, you, you have that sort of distracting Forrest Gump thing that goes on, you know, just as a like Forrest Gump vibe. Like, I don't know where you come from, even though you already told me where you come from, but I, it, I can't comprehend all of it. Everyone knows it's Wendy, who's got the best skipping legs, who's got the open face. Everyone knows it's Wendy, because Wendy's got the... Boo, boo. My Sharona, when you're gonna give me some time, Sharona. My Sharona. Are you there? Okay. Yeah, I'm here. And again, I wish I wasn't because I didn't I didn't really want to hear all that. I can't you. See have you. something. See, this is this is why Brian uh the guy from uh Beach Boys, Brian Brian Wilson was overrated. I don't know if a lot of Brian people know Wilson. That. But this is this is what drove Brian Wilson crazy. He had a guy that used to hang out with him. And he was on the couch all the time, and he would do things like you're doing, these sort of these metaphorical, like, goofs, these forays, these up and downs. And it's like he would do what you're doing, and he slowly drove Brian Wilson crazy. <laughs> oh, there you go. You're back. Yeah, Brian Wilson, a lot of people don't know, Brian Wilson's father wrote all his songs. And that's why they had a falling out, because uh, Brian didn't want to give his father proper credit for those songs. And Brian Wilson had little or no talent. And uh, it's a shame that he was able to bamboozle a whole generation of young music lovers. And his father should have been the one with uh, the credit. Uh, Brian Wilson never went to the beach. He didn't know what the beach was. He didn't even know what a surfboard was. My Sharona. Na, 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 na. That's a good one. Yeah. I like that one. I think I think that what you do by nature of who you are and by nature of whatever's you know sparking in that brain, whatever is like sizzling around, what comes apart is almost like the exhaust of a, of a car. It's 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 not useful for daily consumption. It's like, okay, now we're using um, a, a smart car. So you, 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 you sort of like that last vehicle that got through smog, and now you're just on the road like blasting clouds. What do you, you like being that car? <laughs> do you know that you're that car? Well, it's a familiar car. It's a car everybody can identify with. That's what you mean. Do you want to be the shiny car, that show-off car? The car that people like to scratch with a key in a parking lot? The car that takes up two spots because it's afraid it's going to get damaged by other vehicles in that parking lot? Do you really want to be that car? Or do you want to be the car that just blends in seamlessly, quietly, comfortably with the rest of the cars in the car lot? I guess you'd like to be the shiny car. Maybe the car with the green screen behind it. My God, Robert Downey Jr., if that's your real name. Okay, it's like you're doing a Taco Bell commercial at me. And I, I find that to be almost refreshing. But I hate the hot sauce, so I'm not going there. Um, what are you, you going to do tonight? Like, what are you going to do with yourself? I'm you going to, to the comedy mothership in downtown Austin. I have two shows. That's what and I'm how, doing tonight. And how do you like the people out there? How do you like the crowds? How do you like the, the shows that you've been the doing? The shows are outstanding. The club is beautiful. The people of Austin, Texas are the nicest, friendliest people I've ever met in my whole life. I was at the airport in Austin and there was an announcement that they had found a neck pillow and that they wanted to return that neck pillow. You think that would have happened in New York City at the JFK International Airport if somebody found a neck pillow? Somebody would have picked it up off the floor and put a hole in it. And... 
somebody would have smoked it. Somebody would have used it as like just sort of like a, a a a beach blanket and just like went to bed. But you know, there are people that would return things. You know, like one time I returned a uh, just a what are those little uh, uh, you put them a uh, museum basically museum glue. I returned a, a thing of museum glue. Uh, so you're are you flossing right now? What are you what are you doing? I got a, the, the adhesive on my dentures is starting to come loose. So you're you're uh, you're pushing it up, I guess. You push. It, I've never had such uh, personal effects. Are you? It's okay. Do you need, it's do you okay. need some? It's okay now. It's okay. okay. Well, yeah. Do you have anything else you want to plug? Because this 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 interview is pretty much over. I mean, it it, it ended it ended when it when we started. But no, I I thank you for having me, Robert. Uh, I am a true fan of yours. Uh, your movies, your work is wonderful. Again, if you're three or four years old, or six or seven, but there, you know, there's a place for those movies, and uh, and uh, I wish you the best in your, uh, I guess, whatever you're gonna do next. It must be pretty frustrating to be who you are and not have any real attention, uh, uh, or anything to. Uh, what, what what kind of attention should I be wanting, Brian? And seriously, I do great. I have a great house. I have a great wife, great kids. I have a wonderful mu movie career. I've people like me. I sound like this. I can kind of go like this. I can kind of like make up things. I can go, oh, I want, I want cheeseburger. I want to throw a cheeseburger on the ground. I can say, like, whatever I say kind of sounds like kind of fun, like things are going well. But you, you, my friend, you have issues. Issues? You have issues. You have issues. You have you have uh, something deep inside of you that needs draining. Draining? And, um, issues? Draining issues. Mm. Interesting. But I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to push up on you. I'm just trying to say, I see you. I see where you're coming from. I'm going to squint, but I'm not going to hold the squint. Well, maybe you'd have issues too if you lived, if that was your bunk, and this was your room. No, see, that's good. That's just like an RV. You basically are in the back of an RV. <laughs> I mean, it's the same color, too. It's like beige. That's usually what they go with. Oh. What an interesting person you are. You know, some would say demented. Some would say hilarious. Some would say, um, you know, otherworldly, which would be a couple words. But, all right, I'm going to let you go. I got, we, we got other... <laughs> Na 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 my Sharona when you're gonna give me some time Sharona ba da la 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 da 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 my Sharona ba da 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 my Sharona when you're gonna give me some time Sharona ba da la 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 da 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 